Hello, this is Kirsten Smith, Collections Curator at the Alberni Valley Museum. Today, on Museum at Home, we're looking at the creations of John Halfyard. John Halfyard started making these unique folk art pieces at the age of 84, and before his death at age 94, he made over 200 dolls. Fifty-six of them are here at the Alberni Valley Museum. They have been exhibited in Port Alberni, but also in Vancouver, at UBC, at the Vancouver Art Gallery, even in Toronto, where they were part of the World Craft Fair exhibition. That exhibition was called In Praise of Hands, and John's work was described as the highlight of the doll exhibit. You can also find two of John Halfyard's dolls in the National Collection at the Canadian Museum of History in Ottawa. The characters in John's creations are likely a reflection of the unusual and varied life he led. John was born in 1880 on Jersey in the Channel Islands. At the age of seven, he and a brother were deserted by their parents. John and his brother eventually immigrated to Canada in 1907, though John lost his brother shortly thereafter in the First World War. By 1947, John was living here, in the Alberni Valley, truck farming near the Somas River, next to the farm of Tom and Eileen Devereux. It was after a bout of pneumonia that John went to stay with the Devereaux while he recovered, but he stayed on. Eileen once remarked, he came to supper and never left. It was in the creative atmosphere of the Devereux home that John first started making dolls. One Christmas, John started making a doll out of some discarded Christmas wrap. It was something he used to do on Jersey, making things for children to play with. This is considered to be John's first doll, the one he made on Christmas morning, out of wrapping paper. After this, Eileen encouraged John by giving him leftover material from her own artistic projects. Her influence can be seen in the batik, the fleece, the weavings, and the wool found on the figures. John used found material for his projects. He used leftovers and scraps, odds and ends, anything he could find that captured his imagination. Hearing and sight impairments did not deter John from spending many hours combining varied materials in unique ways to create his little people. John had never learned to read and was considered to have an intellectual disability, but his imagination was certainly well developed. He loved joking and dressing up for parties. He loved telling stories about rogues and villains, ghosts and witches. This clown is one of John's very early dolls. It has soft arms and legs, the kind John made before he got his dolls to stand up. This clown is an example of the detail involved in John Halfyard's early dolls. Again, it has the long, soft arms and legs that John made before he developed an armature for the dolls. The patchwork fabric was machine sewn by Eileen's daughter Julie, and John would use it as he pleased. This early doll, a French clown, is derived from Halfyard's early memories. This characterful doll, with its short skirt and fishnet stockings, shows an early form of armature, as John was trying to enable the dolls to stand. Eileen Devereux considered this clown doll, along with the paper boy you'll see next, to be John's best work. John Halfyard called this doll, Little Paper Boy, or A Little Cockney on the Corner Selling Papers. Another of John Halfyard's early clowns. He used his memories of clowns from when he worked as a roustabout in the circus. Another of John's earlier pieces, as can be seen by the fine stitching, the care taken with his construction, and the painted markings for the features of the face. The finer work indicated John's eyesight was still reasonable, and he felt well. When he was feeling poorly, he didn't take as much time on the dolls. This early owl doll gets its feathered look from the labor-intensive task of layering numerous small pieces of fabric. John ended up making a number of birds, as they proved to be quite popular. John considered this doll to be a hawk. Buttons sewn to the bird's heels provide balance, allowing it to stand. This bird, a grouse, is constructed of stovepipe wire wrapped with fabric and then covered with feathers. The feathers came from the Devereux's chickens and from a pheasant that flew through a neighbor's window. After being in several exhibits in Vancouver and Toronto, the feathers have become a bit worn out. The Grand Owl was also on exhibit in Toronto and Vancouver. Its feathers are the neck and tail feathers from the Devereux roosters. Constructed over an armature of stovepipe wire, the wings and tail were made separately and then attached. 
This delightfully quirky bird was the result of John wanting to try something different. It's made primarily out of new fabric sample swatches. This little hummingbird is also made from new fabrics. John had been given a book of fabric samples to use in his projects. These next two dolls are pure flights of fancy. The centaur doll, half man, half animal, uses fur from black Alaskan seal. The lobster man uses a number of batik fabrics. In contrast to these fanciful creations, John did represent a number of real people in his work. Half Yard saw the famous dwarves, Mr. and Mrs. Tom Thumb, at a circus in England or France, and he drew on these memories to create this pair of dolls. They meant a great deal to Half Yard, and he put a lot of effort into their creation. This spool doll represents a Jamaican woman who did hand sewing for Eileen Devereux. We call it a spool doll because its base is made by stacking empty wooden thread spools. And here we have John's self-portrait, complete with cap and walking stick. He used to refer to himself as all crumpled up. He gave a lot of attention to the hands on this doll, which are different from his other people. Most of the dolls have hands that are created from a single piece of fabric, with the fingers represented with thread. But on John's self-portrait, the fingers are made from individual pieces of fabric-wrapped wire. John also represented people remembered from his time homesteading in Capuscasing in northern Ontario, like this spool doll of a French-Canadian woman in the 1930s or 40s, or this mustachioed doll with hair and sideburns made of sheep's fleece. These trappers are part of a set of three dolls from remembrances of a particular group of visitors to Half Yard's cabin in Capuscasing. White sheep's fleece is used for the hair and beard, and the mitts are made of fur. A woman had given John her old fur coat, and he used it to make the trapper's mitts and to trim his boots and toque. The snowshoes were created by weaving string over willow twigs and then dipping the assemblage into wax. This little trapper has a stuffed backpack, and if you take a peek inside, there's a tiny metal frying pan and a little scrap of blanket. People often dropped off materials for John to work with. This doll represents Dr. Weaver, a local physician, and though John never met Dr. Weaver, he created this doll after Mrs. Weaver dropped off some fabrics for him. The leather for this doll's suit is from a jacket given to Half Yard by the artist Robert Aller. John wanted the doll to be really fancy. Eileen refers to it as Jim Dandy. John made a number of spool dolls in his last years. Here he's poking fun at a church lady, all prim and proper in her big hat. Here, a fancy lady with a batik silk tie. This spool doll has a bead necklace and an elaborate feather hat. And here is John's last doll, unfinished, with needle and thread as he left them the day before he was hospitalized. Which brings us to the end of our episode. Thank you for watching Museum at Home. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the museum's John Halfyard collection.